Hey everybody, William Wallace here, William Wallace for America for my radio show. You're going to hear some background noise here, but we're in the middle of the house chamber hallway going into the house and today I am with State Representative Gary Carter. He's District 102 in New Orleans and as you know I've been doing videos about the constitutional amendments that we're going to see on the ballot. All too often you get in the voting booth and on voting day and you haven't read the ballots, you don't know what they are, and you get this glazed over look on your face and suddenly you realize you didn't have enough coffee before you went to the voting booth. So I'm trying to alleviate that problem by introducing the authors of all these constitutional amendments. And with me today, like I said, is Representative Gary Carter, who's the author of Constitutional Amendment Number 3. Gary, thank you so much for coming on with me today. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's good to be here. I, I want to go over something real quick with everybody. I want to tell people that when they get to the voting booth, this is what they're going to read, and I'm going to let Representative Carter explain it. You're going to see this language on Constitutional Amendment 3. Do you support an amendment to allow for the use of the Budget Stabilization Fund, also known as the Rainy Day Fund, for state costs associated with a disaster declared by the federal government? And if you don't watch this video, you're not going to know what that means. And here to explain that is Gary Carter. Gary, thank you so much for coming on. Could you explain to the public what that means? Yes, my name is Gary Carter and I'm the author and sponsor of Constitutional Amendment Number 3, the Rainy Day Fund. Let me explain what it is. Louisiana's emergency savings account is this Rainy Day Fund. Uh, and the way the structures of the Rainy Day Fund is set up, we can only tap into our Rainy Day Fund, our emergency savings account, when we has, have a loss of revenues. If we have a deficit because we didn't achieve the sales taxes we expected, our oil and gas revenues are low, then and only then can we tap into our Rainy Day Fund. But what we can't currently do in Louisiana is to tap into our emergency savings account when we have a federally declared national disaster. It's so kind of we, ironic. You have an emergency, but you can't tap into the emergency th funds. That's exactly right. And, and unfortunately, we keep having emergencies here in Louisiana. Uh, we have people dealing with Hurricane Delta, the people dealing with Hurricane Delta, dealing with Hurricane Laura, and the yeah. people dealing with Laura and, and Delta right. are still dealing with COVID. Yes, yeah, so it's give a COVID us, statewide. It, it is. And so just to give us another tool in our tool belt, so when we have these emergency measures in place, when we have these emergencies, we can tap into our rainy day fund in order to stand up the people of Louisiana and not have to wait for the federal government to stand us up. So the people of the state, when they go through a, an emergency, we're not waiting for FEMA or the federal government to stand us up. The state of Louisiana will be there right there to stand us up, ourselves up and make sure that we can survive the worst of what nature has to give us. You know what this kind of makes me think of is responsibility. Everybody talks about you know personal responsibility state's responsibilities yeah. Yeah. this is almost a way for the state to be able to say look we don't need to have the federal we know you know of course it's always nice of the federal government to come in and bail you out in an emergency That's but right. you know sometimes you need immediate help to help the people quicker and it sounds to me like this constitutional amendment if passed will do just that, the state will be able to get in quicker and help people. Is that's, that that's exactly it, that when, when we have those emergencies in Louisiana, the state of Louisiana can stand up Louisianians. And of course we need FEMA, we need the federal government, but we shouldn't have to wait, we shouldn't have to delay. Our people need help immediately. Look at what's going on in the Lake Charles area with, with Laura, and I represent the New Orleans area yeah. with, with Hurricane Katrina. Just being able to quickly respond to our people's needs in the state of Louisiana is something that, right, that's why we should have an emergency savings account. And that's why that's why I'm doing these videos because I've noticed that no matter where the representatives are from, you all work together oh, yes. for one mission to help our state. Yes. And that's this, that's the, this, is a, this is a statewide issue. I'm, I'm, I'm served on the Appropriations Committee. I've served on the Appropriations Committee since I've been here and I'm fortunate now to be the Vice Chair of the Appropriations Committee. And when we were studying the Rainy Day Fund and how it's structured and what we can do better, we said, well, let's use our Rainy Day Fund if Louisiana has a rainy day. Right. That when we have an emergency, let's be able to use it. And listen, it's hard to be able to tap into it. It still requires two-thirds votes of the entire legislature for us to be able to tap into that emergency fund. We so put, it's still like a safeguard. It's not like an automatic. That's it's right. still It still that's has right. some oversight to it. And not only that, but we also put procedures and mechanisms in place that when FEMA comes through and when the federal government go, comes through, that money goes right back into our savings account. We don't get to spend that money on anything else. That money goes right back into the rainy day fund. So this is, we have all the, the, the oversight and protections you will want, but it also gives us the, 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 the ability to stand with Louisianans when they need their state the most. 
that's amazing. It's, it's almost like a, a, a home equity loan. You know, when you get more money, you got to put money back into it. That's right. You know, that's so, right. You know that's so, right. so so they can borrow from it as they can borrow from it until the federal government kicks in. But in the meantime, we've helped out Louisianans in a time of an emergency. This is a great idea. Well, thank you. I, I, I appreciate that. I think that. of it more of a bridge to help them get to a, a solid ground. But thank yeah. you. Thank you for having me on and, and, and for all that you do, uh, educating individuals about the importance of these amendments. Uh, one of the concerns is, is just giving the technical language of, of these sorts of constitutional amendments and making sure people understand it. So thanks for putting this in plain language where people can understand That's it. That's exactly, 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 exactly the mission there. So, yeah. so, so not to bore people with too much more detail. I say that joking yeah. because that glaze overlooked <laughs> that we get, but I want to help. I want people to understand you, you know, and your district because you have a, obviously have a, have a passion for our state and the people that are in it. Well, thank a you. passion to serve because you serve. But I want people to know where you're. You say you're from New Orleans, but exactly where are the boundaries? I, I, I come from the best bank of the city of New Orleans, <laughs> and for all who know, that's the West Bank, and those who don't know, that's the West Bank of the city of New Orleans. We affectionately call it Algiers, and we're we're part of New Orleans, the fabric of it, but we're really part of the state of Louisiana as well. Uh, it's a wonderful neighborhood. It's a wonderful district, and you should come visit. I will. I'll abs <laughs> absolutely do that. What made you decide to run for office? Uh, being committed to, to my constituents. Um, I, I was born and raised in Algiers, grew up in Algiers. Uh, my family has always been committed to civic-minded activities. My uncle, uh, Troy Carter, is in the state senate. Okay. Matter of fact, he was the first African-American to hold the seat that I currently have, District 1 oh, wow. 2. Yeah. So I, I grew up with a family that was committed to service, and I had a long career in law, and still, still am a lawyer, and uh, I was in-house at a big company, and I quit to go fight for my district and I, like I have the opportunity to do so. Uh, so it's been fun and, and hopefully the people will continue to support not only me but good measures like uh, amendment number three. What makes up your district? Is it more mostly residential? Is it more business? It's a, it's a residential section of the city of New Orleans. Uh, we have right around 45,000 people. Uh, we have, it's, 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 most of the people in my district, they live well, they, they work in the city of New Orleans, but they live right there on the, the West Bank. Because okay. you get to go to work downtown and then right. you drive back over and you, you have the residential neighborhood right there. And we have a, a wonderful ferry system that connects the, the West Bank of the city to the downtown part of the city of New Orleans. Wonderful people. Well, Representative Gary Carter, thank you very much for your time. I really you. appreciate it. Everybody else, I'm going to ask you, please share the video with anybody that you know that's voting. Hopefully, you know a lot of people that are voting to be able to get this information out about constitutional amendment number three. And for one last quick information, voting for three. Voting is, yes. Is voting, you're voting for three is a way to help the people of Louisiana during an emergency, is that correct? That is correct. All right, everybody, thank you very much. And remember, William Wallace for America. Thank you.